Well, welcome to the final quest. Only today is a time out. I'm in the studio by myself. Matt had some things he had to attend to and there's some sickness with in-laws and all that kind of stuff. But this works out perfectly for us in our final quest narration, the reading, because I'm on page 176 and the Lord Jesus tells Rick something really, really important. It's called the power of his word. The power of his word. So I'm on page 176 and instead of just reading my pages today, I'm doing a time out for a Bible study. The Bible study on the power of the word of God. We, we can't just run, you know, past all this stuff because here's what the Lord Jesus said. You seek to know and to walk in my power so that you can heal the sick and perform miracles. But you've not even begun to comprehend the power of my word. It's capital, my word. To resurrect all the dead who have ever lived on the earth will not even cause me <laughs> to strain. <laughs> It will not even cause me to strain. I up, uphold all things by the word of my power. The creation exists because of my word. It is held together by my word. And before the end, I will reveal my power on the earth. Even so, the greatest power that I've ever revealed on the earth or ever will reveal is still a very small demonstration of my power. I do not reveal my power to cause men to believe in my power, but to cause men to believe in my love. Wow. So I want you to hang with me. Exodus fifteen eleven years ago, the Lord gave me personal revelation about the three realms that he lives in after the Red Sea. Moses said, O living God, you're majestic in your holiness. You're awesome in praises. This is Exodus 15, 11, And you're still working wonders. I went, wow, wow, Lord, what does that mean? He goes, it's real simple, Ken. I dwell in the realm of my holiness. Holiness unto the Lord is super important. These days, future days, all days ever, holiness unto the Lord is super important. Now I'm gonna to get to the word of God in just a second. I'm using Exodus 15, 11 right now the three realms that he lives and he said, I live in the realm of my holiness. Number two, I'm awesome in praises is glory, the glory realm. I live in the realm of my own glorious glory. And then thirdly, I'm still working wonders. First of all, thank you, Lord, that you're doing these things. And these you reveal to men like me and women on this earth, the three realms you live in, the realm of his holiness, which includes majesty, the realm of his glory, which includes everything concerning his glory. And then the realm of his power, I'm still working wonders. So let's do holiness, glory, and power. Why is this important? Because men want the third category power, but they don't want the first realm of holiness and the second realm that he receives all the glory. Having walking in the realm 
of his power, even miracles is supernatural. With, without the other two realms buffering the power, the realm of his holiness and the realm of his glory, it will blow your head off. In other words, the realm of his power has two governors. The first is knowing him in his holiness is the fear of the Lord. And secondly, the realm of his glory, that we give you all the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord. See, the realm of holiness and glory is the proper governor or the proper elements to know to be safe walking in his power. Better say it again, Ken, I know. To be safe walking in his power. So I'm going to go to the Word of God. I'm going to reread 176, that one paragraph. He said, you got to know the power of my Word. I, I think we take it for granted. We have printed Bibles, published Bibles with, you know, words on pages. And I think sometimes we take it for granted. But I want to hit it one more time so everybody gets it. I want to see his miracles. I want to walk in that power. And I have intermittently in my life in, you know, 47 years of ministry. But I really love that he lives in the realm of his own holiness, which you could put majesty in the realm of holiness or glory. But he's holy. This is its own upper echelon category. Wow. So I live, Moses said, you're majestic in your holiness, realm number one. You're awesome in praises, which awesomeness has to do with glory and all the realm of his glory. And that I'm still working wonders. Again, this is Exodus 15, 11, is his power, holiness, glory, and his power. I'm going to say it again. Men want the power. Oh, if we can have the power of God. You know, but if you use it the wrong, wrong way, if you don't give him the glory, do his name and his power. Power without the two governor elements of holiness and of, uh, of glory is not good for you. It can take your head off. You, you can get blown up in your own mind and your own self. So the, these are the three realms that God said, I want you to know my holiness and the fear of the Lord, that I dwell in my realm of the holy, and then I dwell in the realm of my glory. But these two areas, these two realms, will help you navigate my power properly on the earth. Man, that is so good. That's why I had to start with that today. And I think you get it. So back on page 176, the title in the bold print is the power of his word. You see, you seek to know and to walk in my power, says the Lord, so that you can heal the sick and perform miracles. But you have not even begun to comprehend the power of my word to resurrect all the dead who have ever lived on this earth will not even cause me to strain. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I uphold all things by the power of my word. The creation exists because of my word, and it is held together by my word. So this is the final quest, time out to look at Hebrews 4.12. I want you to open your Bibles right now to Hebrews 4.12. Most people know it somewhat by heart, but I'm gonna read it. And again, the power of his word, this is a safeguard for us to have equilibrium, to make it through the weeks, the months, and the years of fulfilling godly destiny. Here's what it says. For the word of God, what can it's for the word of God, the word of his power, the power of his word is number one, living. Number two, it's powerful. Living is separate than powerful. Hebrews 4.12, if you're still looking it up. Number three, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It didn't just say sword. It said the sword that is 
sharp on both edges. Oh my God, devastating. Four, the word of God is piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. And five, check it now, listen closely. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. No one can do that but God. And there's no element that can do it like the word of God. The intents of a man or a woman, a teenager, a child's heart, you can't know that. But he says, I know it. And my word is so powerful. It's living. It's powerful. It's actually a discerner. It will expose the thoughts and intents of the heart. Isn't that awesome? Let's think about it for a second. I keep thinking today, I started on this yesterday on a Sunday, it's a Monday, and I'm going, how great of a salvation is this, Lord? You gave us the word of God, your word that you speak. Jesus is the living word. The word of God, when it goes forth, cannot return void, Isaiah 55. But in this case, the word of God is five things. Cut them off. It's living. It's powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And it's piercing. It can divide between the soul and the spirit of joints and marrow, and then it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Isn't that awesome? Now, that's the New King James. Here's the Amplified Bible classic version. It's the older version of the Amplified. This is what the Amplified says. Listen closely. For the word that God speaks, he's speaking. He spoke his word, it's now documented in 66 books. But the word that God speaks is alive. It's full of power, powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. For it's penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life. Whoa. It's penetrating to the divining, the dividing line of the breath of life or the breath of your soul. Oh, that's so powerful. And the immortal spirit. Now the fifth one in the Amplified says, for the word that God speaks and is speaking is exposing, sifting, <laughs> analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Wow. So the first three I'll come back to, but let's do four, first of all, from the Amplified. The word that God speaks is penetrating. It penetrates into our soul and our heart. It, it has right past the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and of the immortal spirit. No other religious leader, no other politician, no other government official ever said, well, here's what we could do. We could go ahead and penetrate to the dividing line of the breath of life in a human being and their immortal soul. They can't do it. There's no scientist. There's no lab that can do that. But the word of God, see in page 176 in the final quest, Jesus said, you've got to know deeper, wider, and comprehend better the power of my word that upholds all things. It created all things. That's why I'm doing this timeout in our reading of the, the final quest. And then number five in the Amplified says, for the word that God speaks is exposing the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Whoa. It's sifting the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. The word that God is speaking is analyzing the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. 
and then the four thing and the amplified under this one, number five, exposing, sifting, and it's judging the very purposes and intents of the heart. I want to just pause for a second and go, thank God you don't even know all the thoughts and intents of your own heart. People get confused in their soul. They get confused in their heart. But God said, I am a knower. I know the intents and thoughts of your heart. Thank you, God. <laughs> Somebody can take care of me. You know, they talk about near genius people, real genius, ADHD. Uh, they talk about all these different things. God knows. He knows and he can take care of our heart. He can take care of our mind and our soul. Let's rejoice in Christ Jesus, our salvation. It's funny, it's it's having this effect peculiar. It's having this effect on me because a lot of people that have mental illness or fight depression or, or fight anything in the soul area, they don't trust themselves anymore. They don't know if they're sane or insane or crossing a line. He knows. See, the word of God is a discerner. It's a sifter and an analyzer. And this is why Jesus was telling Rick, we're in the fifth part of the final quest. We're nearing the end of this whole book of trans visions that he recorded. The Lord allowed him to remember and record what we've been reading. And I, I'm loving it big time. I've had so many comments about, man, Ken, it's awesome. You know, I'm just going to share this with you because I want you to pray about it. Uh, we unplugged from a couple things at the first of the year that I had some more time. And uh, the bottom line is, Matt goes, Dad, I want you to, my son, who's really our producer, and he's full-time ministry, worship leader. He said, I want you to go back, Dad, to being led by the Spirit every day and just do what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. We'll record it. We'll post it. We, you don't have to do it live on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday or Friday. He said, is there anything left that you want to do that you've not yet done in worship, in music, in singing, in narration, in speaking the Word of God? I said, yes, there is. Job 35.10, I am going to do in the Lord for my Jesus songs in the night. People can't sleep. People have tremendous fear and anxiety. And the Lord gave me his anointing. I can sing fear and anxiety underneath his anointing in his presence right off of people and they can sleep at night. Songs in the night or check it out. I'm going to do lullabies of heaven. I'm going to do melodies of the heart of my heavenly Abba Father, the heart of Jesus. Think of this, you guys. And it'll be based on the word. I, I will narrate the Psalms, but I'll do it super slow. I mean, this is something I've never done before. It's not upbeat music. It's not bombastic and victory. This would be super slow, deep in his presence. And it's so transformative because that's who he is. Because Hebrews 4.12 is in the scripture. The Word of God is alive. And we're going to put a music bed together. I've got two or three people that want to help. But they're, they're really very close to the Lord. I, I won't use anybody or anything that's not dripping full of the anointing. I want you to pray about it. I don't have any fear going into it, but I realize I have to build into it and honor the Lord. And again, He lives in the realm of His holiness. I'll be careful to give him every ounce of all the glory for he's still working wonders, the realm of his power. This should be a sign and a wonder. Songs in the night that are so dripping full of the presence and the anointing of the Lord. 
you'll have to sleep. <laughs> you'll only be able to take, so I, there's other things coming up for all of us, but I think it's super powerful. Man, I'm blessed. Let's go back to Hebrews 4.12. I've been in the Orthodox Jewish Bible lately. <laughs> it's full of Hebrews, Hebrew words. I have to look up um, on, Bra on Bravo. <laughs> I go, man, the Orthodox Jewish Bible is something else. And here's what it says. It has the New Testament done. Whoever did that, God bless you. Thank you. But Hebrews 4.12 and the Orthodox Jewish Bible says, the word of God is able. The word of God is able to judge. The Meshavat, the thoughts and the deliberations of the Kavanat Halev, which is the inner directedness of the heart. Wow, who knew? What a great definitive phrase that, see, you're going to study the word more this year than you ever have before because Jesus said so. <laughs> Ken Henry is going to be more, I, I've been in Psalm 91 for a few days and that now I'm in Psalm 34. I'm going back to 2020 we did a psalm a day keeps the devil away, the devil at bay. We did 85 psalms in 90 days. I've gone back to that narration and I'm going through because that's going to be like, can you imagine songs in the night? Just Lord, you are my refuge and surely you're my strength. Can you imagine reading the word slowly? The power of the Holy Spirit and a music bed. Oh my God. See, because the word of God is able to judge. First of all, it's able, it's living. It's got its own ability. It's living. It's powerful as back to the amplified to expose to sift, to analyze, and to judge. Back to the old Orthodox Jewish Bible, the inner directedness of the heart. Who can tell what the motivation of a politician's heart is? Who can tell what the motivation, well, if it's a coach that loves his team, his kids, if it's coaching, that's probably a pretty good motivation to train, to teach, to disciple, to discipline. How about a teacher? Well, see, no one can discern the inward directedness of the heart. I, I can't get over that phrase. Orthodox Jewish Bible, the word of God is able to judge the thoughts and deliberations of the heart. It says the inner directedness of the heart. Now I'm going to give you the word, the Greek word, the word of God is living is the word zeo, zero, having vital power in itself. The word of God has vital power. This is right out of Strong's Concordance, vital power in itself and exerting the same upon the soul. So when I ran it down, the other parallel scriptures, the word of God has vital power within itself. First Peter 1 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. This word is living and abiding forever. You got to take a minute forever. Who talks like that? There's nothing, almost nothing forever in this life. But first Peter 1 23 says being born again, you were born again of not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible 
by the word of God, the power of his word that has vital power within itself, which lives, the word of God is living and abiding forever. Thanks for sharing. What a great salvation. Then Acts 7, 38, get ready. See, we're beefing up this, this page 176 in the final quest. You know, we'll see how it works out. I had a thought that maybe I should go back and look at the major principles of each chapter, each part, and just fill in the blank with the word of God. But right now, Acts 7, 38, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spoke to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles, the living oracles, the living word to give unto us. This one's really important. The power of the word of God, it's alive, it's active, it's sharper. It's discerning the thoughts of the heart. John 6.51, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Wow. The living bread. Living bread. <laughs> I mean, bread is so good on so many levels. <laughs> Recently, Carl and I went to Red Lobster and those cheese biscuits, oh my gosh, they shouldn't have made them. <laughs> but fresh bread is so good to be. He says, I am the living bread. John 6, 51. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. And if any man eat of this bread, get ready, he will live forever. Wow, thanks, Lord. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I give for the life of the world. The living bread we continue to eat every day. You can go on a 40 day water fast, but you're gonna lose some weight and you're gonna have to get some nutrition in there. But I don't think you can go past three or four days without liquids, your kidneys shut down, you die. Food, he said, I'm the living bread, I'm alive. Partake, understand the power of my word, I wanna, just go back to page 176 as I close out today. Again, this is a little different, but it's really good because we get to look at what Jesus actually said to Rick. This is 176 in the final quest, the power of his word, the power of his word, the power, do you understand the power of his word? You seek to know and to walk in my power so that you can heal the sick and perform miracles. But you've not even begun to comprehend the power of my word to resurrect all the dead who've ever lived on the earth will not even cause me to strain. I uphold all things by the word of my power, everybody, let's settle down, settle in. Let's trust the Lord. He said, I'm upholding you anyway. I'm upholding all things by the word of my truth and my power. The creation exists because of my word, word. It's held together, all of creation, by my word. You know, the scientists, they keep running these circular, um, underground things trying to split atoms and get the, down to the finest, you know, molecule of life. And they go, we don't know. <laughs> well, we know. He upholds everything. He covers us. He surely is our covering. He's our shield, our buckler. He said, before the end, I will reveal my power on earth.